Hello and good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Man, I got to tell you what. You have put together something here that I think is going to be around 50, 75 years. This is, this is something that speaks genuinely not only to the up-and-coming generation, but to a modern generation that wishes we had books like this when we were younger. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's great to hear. Mm. Where, Very good. Where does it come from? Because, I mean, it, did, you, did you live it? I mean, do you, did you go to a coffee shop or a tea shop and just sit there and go, this is, oh, this is it. This, we gotta, we got to put this into the storyline. Um, well, I mean, kind of a long story. Uh, like, uh, Heartstopper actually originated as a kind of spin-off from one of my books that I wrote before Heartstopper. Um, Nick and Charlie were characters in my very first book, which is called Solitaire. But in that book, they're just side characters. You don't really learn a lot about them. Um, so when I finished writing that book, I was like, I love these characters so, so much, and I want to know what their story is. Um, and so that became Heartstopper, uh, and it's just grown from there. Patrick, how do you keep it so natural, like it's authentic, like it's something that's really happening in our everyday lives? I think that all comes from Alice, really, because um, the genesis of the TV version is just um, me reading the webcomic and being like, wow, this could be really exciting, this could be an amazing TV series, and then talking to Alice, finding a kind of creative um, collaboration and partnership there, and we've just sort of tried to make the TV show as close to the webcomic graphic novel book series as we possibly can, and I think to speak to the naturalness that, that you mentioned, that is what is so inherent in your drawings. The boys are so easy with each other and the intimacy that Alice puts on the page is what we wanted to capture on screen. And so to have worked with brilliant directors, Eros Lynn and Andy Newbury, and of course, Kit and Joe, in kind of bringing Alice's vision to life, it's just a privilege. And, and that's, yeah, that's where the naturalness is, I think. Well, Alice, I mean, the, th- the thing about it is, is is that the graphic novel is amazing in the way of there's real emotion inside those 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 pictures, the illustration. I mean, it's like you can you I, I'll, I'll look at the illustration, then I'll read the words. And it's, it's like because I feel something in this whole t- entire, you know, a connection here. I'm so sorry. I just I can't I can't hear. I don't know if it's something on our end. Um, if anyone can help. Can, can you okay. hear me now? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. There, there's such an emotion attached to the to the illustration as well as the storyline. Connecting them the way that you do, it's almost like you go into a different dimension with the readers. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, that's one of the things that I love to draw the most is um, expressions and little yeah. gestures between characters and body language. Um, my favorite thing to draw is people and people's emotions um and so that's kind of how i create heartstopper and how i write and draw these relationships um and big big feelings that um are so central to the story of heartstopper um yeah it's just what i love to to write stories about you know what's really interesting, Patrick, is the fact that I, I, I speak with so many different authors that dream of getting shows, uh, you know, displayed on things like such as Netflix or even uh, TV shows. The thing is, yeah. is that you're part of this journey. I mean, you're part of this legacy. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a privilege. And getting to, to work on the show with Alice is just such a joy. Um, you know, we've been doing uh, kind of like uh, panels when we've been in New York and previously in Toronto. And it's been amazing meeting the fans who are just so appreciative and and uh, such pains to say thank you for doing this and i'm like i would do it for like nothing this is like it's the funnest thing and it's it's something that we both love and we just have passion for so yeah to get to do it is, is brilliant alice how do you work on the pacing because you you're not rushing anything in this story at all it feels like it's really happening in real time um, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a planner. Uh, when I, I, before I write, I, I plan very carefully what the plot of the story is going to be. Um, I always know exactly what's going to happen at the end of the story, so I'm always working with that end point in mind. Um, and really, the, the pacing of Heartstopper is just, I want it to feel really natural um, and like we're growing up alongside these characters who are growing up and we're really just following them through their 
ordinary everyday lives, the problems that they face and the joys that they experience. Um, and uh, yeah, I want it to feel as real as it can. So Patrick, so the, the book, this is volume number five. You guys are uh, uh, in the TV show are, are doing season number three. Do you sneak look into, into, into the future books to find out what your character is going to be doing? I do. Yeah. yeah, so that's another really fun part of the job is that Alice sends me the comic panels and, and has, you know, we've been talking about what the ending of Heartstopper is going to be and we've been looking forward to, to finishing that story and telling it in a really complete way. Um, so, yeah, it's really exciting to be kind of, uh, you know, have the bird's eye view of what Alice's sort of vision for the whole story is and it's really, really important that we do that justice in the TV version. Um, and yeah, people seem to be loving season three, so I think Touchwood so far, we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. Alice, he said the, the ending. Come on, as, as readers and viewers, we don't want to see an ending, but then again, it's on Netflix, we can start it all over again, but still, we don't want to see the story end. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, all stories have to end eventually. Um, it's a very bittersweet feeling. Like, obviously, I'm very very sad um to to be eventually saying goodbye to heartstopper um because i love this story and i love these characters but at the same time i i want it to end on a high i would never want to drag it on forever and ever um it, yeah, that that's no good for any story i don't think so yeah i am i'm sad but i'm also really excited about bringing the story to a close and and creating the most beautiful ending that i can Patrick, one of the things that we have these days, we have giant flat screen TVs in our living rooms. But the thing is, though, is that I would like to see a few of these episodes up on a big screen in a movie theater so I can really get that that movie theater, you know, kind of a vibe that that a story like this can bring out. Do you, have you seen it on a big screen? We, def we have watched it on a big screen. Yeah, we've seen it in Toronto and we saw it in New York um, and we, we've actually seen it in London as well. So we've been doing a bit of a tour and seeing it up on these beautiful um big cinema screens is amazing and I think that's one of the things I'm really proud of is the artistry behind the show it, it, it makes it look so cinematic and so you know the, the story is, is you might say it's a small story because it's just about teenagers doing everyday things but actually the emotional scale of it is massive and I think that's reflected in how all the brilliant craft people who've come together to make the show have made it look and when you see it on the big screen you're like wow this is like but it's more than just a story about teenagers because one one of the things that you do Alice is that you you showcase love, friendship, loyalty. These are all things that we need to teach our young teens and younger adults, but you're doing it in a way that's through the pages of a book and through a TV show. Yeah, I mean, um it's I think Heart Supper is kind of naturally um a little bit educational like it, it, just because of the tone of the story, it it has this optimistic, um, you know, it, it tells you that things are going to be okay and it shows you how. Um, so even though the characters go through these dark times, for example, Charlie deals with having an eating disorder, we see exactly how he gets out of that dark place and finds healing and finds recovery. Um, and hopefully that is helpful to young people, especially who really need that um, in, in the books that they're reading and they need that information. So, yeah, hopefully it is a little bit helpful um, in some way. Patrick, I would love to see the, the, the studies on people who have watched uh, heart, uh, heart Stoppers on, on their smartphones or in the privacy of their bedrooms, and it's teaching them to be more open with their emotions. And so when they go to school or they go to their jobs, they're, they're a little bit more open because you guys say it's okay to be you. Yeah, I mean, I... I think the show is, um, it, it always centers optimism in, yes. in the, in, and in a very queer story. And I think this is maybe one of the first generations that are getting lots of media now that is, is optimistic and hopeful and has kind of joy in it. And as Alice says, we don't shy away from the tough, uh, you know, storylines. Those things exist in the world and we tackle them. But I think we do it in a way that says, you know, you can get through this and open communication is the key um, and, and doing things in your own way. There's no one defined way to be a queer person. There's no one defined queer identity. And that's one of the things in the show that I'm really proud of. It's sort of celebrating lots of different identities in the LGBTQIA, um, 
you know, family really. So yeah, hopefully it's a little kind of slice of rainbow joy for people to um, to use and to take in and, and have a positive impact. Alice, where can people go to find out more about your journey? Because with you bringing this story to an end, it's like, oh my God, she's got to be doing something else. You can't turn writing off. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I well, Heart Stopper is very much my focus right now, and um, people are welcome to follow me on Instagram. That's kind of where I'm most active. It's just at Alice Oseman. Um or you can find out more about my books um, on my website, aliceoseman.com. Um, but yeah, who knows what the future will bring? Uh, things are very Heart Stopper focused right now, but it's coming to an end, and then I'll get to write a new story, and I'm I'm really excited about that. Yeah. What about you, Patrick? Where can people find more about you? Uh, well, on Instagram as well, Pat Walters two underscores is my is my username. Um, I, yeah, I'm working on Heartstopper. It takes up a huge amount of time, and, and that's amazing. I'm also working on a show which uh, came out yesterday on Stars called Sweet Pea with a fab, fabulous actress called Ella Purnell in the lead role. It's very different to Heartstopper, that's all I'll say, but it's also very good. Wow. The two of you have got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Well, you be brilliant, and thank you for, for your art, the two of you, your acting as well as your writing, because the world needs this right now. Oh, thank you.